My name is Malik Smith. Uh, I'm originally from Congo, but I've been living in South Africa for, for quite long, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 12 years. Uh, cutting hair is, for me, uh, a gift from God, because, you know, I haven't got it from anyone, no one thought me. I was born with it, I can say. Uh, if I have to tell my story about how I started cutting my hair, the hair, I could say, uh, one day, I, I have a little brother, our elder brother used to cut our hair. It happens that whenever he was cutting my brother, and he was always crying. And for me, I was feeling pain, seeing my little brother crying all the time. Then I said to myself, if only I could cut. So I'll be cutting my brother myself, so that he, he won't be crying. And at that age, I think I was nine years old or 10 years. No one could have taken that risk to, to, to let me cut his hair. So definitely one day, uh, a guy moved in in our house and he was looking for new friends. You know when you move into a new area and you want to look for friends. So I was the first person he approached and asked me if I know of anyone that can cut hair. I said, yes, I can, of course, you can cut hair. So he took the risk of giving me his head without even seeing me cutting anyone. And I can still see that image where he's sitting on the, on the background, I mean, at the backyard. I started cutting his head. One of our friends saw me cutting, was, but Smith, since when are you cutting? I said, no, I'm starting today. So from that day, I cut his hair, and one of the barber in our corner said, but Smith, why we never told us that you can cut hair? I was like, okay, this is my first touch. Already people are seeing, saying this. Then I asked him a question, did I cut him right? He said, no, you cut him perfect. For someone to notice the mistake, that person must be a barber. So from that day, I said to myself, okay, uh, the next time I'm not gonna be hiding myself, I'll be cutting him in the front in the front of the, the street, so everyone can say. Then, they started. I started cutting my friends for fun, you know. Just, if they give you money to go and go to the barber, you know, you just give me half, I cut your hair, then you go home. So that's how I started cutting until today. I love doing it. Uh, I enjoy it because it's, uh, it's inspired me. And uh, the people around, it's helped me to make new friends, you know, to socialize with people and, uh, the fact that uh, I love it and I sometimes feel more like if I spend two days without cutting people's hair, I feel, I feel incomplete. So the hair for me is like uh, my lifestyle, yeah. Okay, my ambition is, uh, first of all, it is to serve the community. You know, if you have to notice around here, we, we, we cut in a very low price, which everyone can be, can afford a haircut. And uh, a part of that, obviously, uh, I, would, uh, I would want this brand to become big, you know, to cut big names, you know, the celebrities and stuff, why not? Because I know I'm, I'm capable of doing it and uh, I trust myself, I know what I'm, I can do. And so, yeah. First of all, when I came in South Africa, I started working for, for some lady who had a, a barber shop down the road. And uh, it happens that uh, I, I got sick. I had to go to Johannesburg for... I had to go to Johannesburg. Uh, when I got to Johannesburg to get my treatment, I spent almost a year. And when I came back, I found out that the building where I was working was sold. And then one day I went to one of my friends um, around Absa Bank that has a barber shop. I started cutting there for like from the morning to 12 o'clock just to so I can at least get me something for eight time, you know. It happens that a few of my clients find out that uh, cement is cutting in a certain place. So right then it happens that I've been there for two, a year and a half. Then I said to myself, come on, uh, I was born to be my own man. and." Uh, so I've been looking for a space where I can open a new barber. One day, I was cutting a friend of mine called Frank. He asked me about Smith, I can see you, you're quite popular, you know, working for someone, why don't you open your own barber shop? I told him exactly, uh, that's the idea, and just looking for space and stuff. Then he told me, listen, um, I'm opening an internet cafe, why don't you come so we can get you a space in there so you can have your own thing. Uh, yeah, then after a few months, he opened an internet cafe, and. I took a space of two chairs uh, while working for him, I mean with him, because I was renting the space. 
It happens that the shop next door, the person that was renting there just moved out. Then I said to myself, I said, okay, I think this is the opportunity for me to have my own business, to sign my own contract, because one day Frank can change his mind and, you know, trying to ask me to move out and to be another thing. I said to myself, okay, I'm not gonna make it a big deal. As long as I have a gift that God gave me to cut, I know it's gonna work. So yeah, uh, that was in 2012, since we, we opened the doors in this, in the shop here. Yeah. yeah, of course, uh, you know, living in a, in, a, in, a, in a foreign country where you have to, to survive, you have to pay rent and all those things. And, uh, and the community where we are, you know, it's not a high class thing. So um, there's some ups and downs, which sometimes, you know, it's difficult to pay rent. Sometimes it's quiet, sometimes it's, it's busy. You might not, you know, afford to, to, to pay rent and you, you don't live on the street, you have to pay where you're staying as well. So uh, I've learned a, a lot. And one thing is that uh, just to, to be friendly with the clients, um, good with the community because there are, there are a lot of barber shop in around the, the area, but I can see in this shop we are the most popular. And uh, that's for me, uh, it's a blessing, so yeah.